Good morning, and welcome to City Church of Philadelphia. I am Pastor Gail Randolph-Williams. Welcome to all of you who are watching via Facebook Live, and to those of you who are here in the sanctuary. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. They say it's going to be a, a hot one today, uh, uh, so we might need the uh, paper towels, the cloths, or whatever it is to dry ourselves, <laughs> because they say it's going to be pretty hot today. So I pray that you would just be watchful and take care of yourself to the best of your ability and try to stay cool. But above all, remember that the Lord is there for you. He is there with you, always to guide you and to lead you, to teach you, and to tell you exactly which way to go and what to do. So be blessed in the Lord today and bless the Lord today. I'd like you to join with me today on this first Sunday of the month. It is Communion Sunday. So I'd like you to join with us as we sing the songs of the Lord that remind us of what Jesus Christ did for us at Calvary, his perfect sacrifice for you and for me. And one of the old hymns of the church, there is a fountain filled with blood. Why don't you sing with me? has been my theme and shall be till I die. Thank you, Lord, for your precious blood that flows, 
Thank you, Lord, that it never loses its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. There is no one that's too high or too low in this earth that they cannot receive the cleansing flood of your blood. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your amazing grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Thank you, Jesus, for your obedience to the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. For leading us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear! The amazing grace. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secure. Thank you, Lord. You are the God who called me here below. 
and you will be forever mine, and I will be forever yours. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God Almighty, I'm going to stand for you in the light and in the darkness, in the good times and in the bad times, in joy and in sadness. I am going to stand for you, Lord. You stood before creation, eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame thank you Jesus my sin weighed upon your shoulders my soul now to stand so what could I say Completely to you. So I'll walk upon salvation, your spirit alive in me. My life to declare your promise, my soul now to stand so what could I say and what could I do but offer this heart oh God completely completely to you. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul Come on, sing with me. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered. All I am is yours. So what could I say, and what could I do, but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are in this place, that you are 
all around us and your angels fill this place. We thank you, Lord, that we could say to you, what could we say and what could we do? But offer our hearts and all of us, oh God, completely to you. Lord, we surrender to you today. Thank you for your holy presence blessing us in this sanctuary today. Thank you, Lord, for enveloping us in your love in this house today and in houses everywhere they are watching via Facebook Live. Thank you, Lord, for your holy presence. How awesome is your presence. How glorious is your presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Lord, for wrapping us in your love in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's all about you, God. It's not about anything else, oh, Lord. It's all about you. Hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the only true and sovereign God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Hallelujah to the King who reigns in majesty and in power and in dominion. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Hallelujah to God Almighty. We love you, Lord. We worship you, mighty God. We praise you. We offer ourselves to you and to you alone. Be glorified in this place today. Be glorified in our lives. Be glorified on our blocks. Be glorified in our neighborhoods. Be glorified in our communities. Be glorified in our cities around the world, oh God, and in this nation. Be glorified. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. We will now hear the word of the Lord as Deacon Charles Achilles would bring it to us today. Good morning to everyone here at, here at City Church of Philadelphia in person and to our online congregation. Of course, we always welcome everyone to join us here in person. We are here at City Church of Philadelphia, 2311 South 13th Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19148. This scripture I remember from studying the International School of Ministry. It was a video service here, but the scripture was a part of our class. And then I remember it here looking at the banners that we hang up, we hang them up because they're, they're important. And I like to read what the Bible says about itself. Join me please to turn to the second book of Timothy. And I'm gonna read starting in 14 through the end of the chapter. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which you are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16 is that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. We give you thanks for this reading this morning. We want to give you all the glory and honor and praise that is due your name this morning. Prepare us to receive the message this morning, Lord. Open our ears and our hearts. 
And now we will welcome Pastor Gail Randolph Williams to present the message this morning. Good morning again, and welcome to you all. We thank the Lord that he allows us to come and to hear his word, to be taught in the word of God, to not just know the word of God, but to allow the word of God to become flesh in our lives, that we would not just hear the word of God, but that we would live by the word of God. That we would understand that as we open up our Bibles, that holy text, that they are not just words that are written on a page. Those words are spirit and are life. And they give life to us. They encourage us. They strengthen us. They build us up. They help us to know what is right and to know what is wrong. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're the one who teaches us all things and that you help us to know which way to go and what to do. You teach us in the word of God. You bring back to our remembrance those things that we have studied and learned and you bring them back in the time when we need them. We thank you that the word of God is a weapon. It is a sword and when the enemy comes in and tells us lies, we can use the sword of the spirit against him. Amen. God did not leave us here defenseless. God, the Holy Spirit, is with us. God is with us. There is nothing in the Trinity that is not with us. God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wherever you see one, there is the other. Just think about when Jesus was baptized. The Father spoke from heaven. Jesus was standing in the water. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him. I thank God that the triune God, the fullness of the Godhead, are one, working together. An example for you and me in terms of our leadership in our churches or wherever it is that we are, that we would work together interrelationally, interdependent upon one another being as one. Today I'm going to read to you from Nehemiah chapter 4. And the title of the message is, Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Nehemiah chapter 4. Our verse that we will concentrate on today is verse 20, which will be the last verse that I read. I know it's a lot of verses to read before a message, but I believe that it is necessary to read all of it. I could tell you the story without reading it, but I, I kind of like to read from the scripture. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were being closed, that they became very angry and all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to God and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, huh, they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause that work to cease. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came that they told us 10 times, from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. 
Therefore, I position the men behind the lower parts. This is Nehemiah telling us what his strategy was. I positioned the men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings, and I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And when it happened, and it happened, and it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us, and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at the construction while the other half held spears, the shields, the bows, and the armor, and wore the armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with, other, with the other hand they held a weapon. Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built. And the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive, and we are separated from one another on the wall. And here is the, here is the verse. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. Wherever you hear the sound of the shofar, as it would say in the King James, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. Do you hear that? I know oftentimes I'm in the hospital and there are all kinds of sounds that are going off in the emergency and in the trauma area. All kinds of sounds that you hear. And every now and then I say to someone, do you hear that? There is a sound in that area that is above all the other sounds, that is different from all of the other sounds. And I say to folk, do you hear that? And every now and then somebody says, yeah, I hear that. It's that. It's coming from there. Most of the time people say to me, there are sounds going on everywhere. What are you talking about? But it's like the woman who touched the robe of Jesus, touched the hem of his garment, and he says, somebody touched me. It was different from any other touch. And the disciples said to him, you know, what, are you kidding me? Everybody's touching you. Everybody's crowded in to be near you and put their hands on you. And he says, I, 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 I know somebody touched me in a different kind of way. Somebody touched me in a way that virtue left me. And as we know that that woman was healed as a result. I want to know, do you hear that? That sound that is above all the other sounds. That sound that is different from all the other sounds that are going on around you. Because there are many sounds that are going on around us. And we, like Nehemiah and the leaders, we are building too with evangelism and discipleship and the equipping of the saints. We are building up the church with justice and righteousness, mercy and peace. We are building a society where all human beings are equal, equal where? In the criminal justice system, equal in the education system, in the economic system, equal in the health care and political systems equal in the legal system and in society at large, equality, equity. 
That's what we're building. Right now, we see disparities and injustice in all of these systems. It is up to those of us who are kingdom of God oriented people to build a world according to the design and the specifications of our sovereign God. We've got to wake up and stop being complacent. The Bible says, wake up, O sleeping one. We've got to wake up and stop being complacent. Stop being comfortable. To be co-laborers with our reigning king in bringing justice and equality where there is injustice and inequality. We have to wake up and move out of our comfort zones to bring abundance where there is poverty, to bring peace where there is chaos, unrest, and violence. Many of us are already working in these different fields to bring about the will of God. And while the work is going on, we need protection from the enemy that seeks to bring us down with the rest of the world. The assignment of the enemy is to steal, kill, and destroy. But our mission is to stand against the adversary and prevent to render null and void and of no effect the assignment of Satan and his demons by the power that God gave us. God gave you power. You don't just have to take it. You don't just have to lie down and die over it. You can stand. And having done all, you can continue to stand. Because our God reigns and he has given you and me the victory. Like the families that Nehemiah spoke to, we also must have a sword at our side. It is the sword of the spirit, which is our great weapon. What does it say? Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Wherever you hear the sound of the shofar, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. All we have to do is be obedient when we hear the sound. Do you hear that? We must listen for the sound of the trumpet with the sword of the spirit, with praise and worship, with prayer and intercession. We will meet at the place of need and defeat the enemy there. Do you hear that? There is some pastor over in North Philadelphia who is calling us to, to, to support him in our intercession, in our prayer, in our worship of God, that, the, that, that God would stem the tide of gun violence in that area of our city and other areas around the city to defeat the enemy. The question is, again, do you hear that? Do you hear the gunshots at different points of the city? Do you hear the cry of those who are living in poverty? Do you hear the imploring voices of the homeless? Do you hear that? It is the enemy in these places that seeks to steal and kill and destroy. And the trumpet is sounding in those places. Do you hear that? Do you hear the anguish of the mentally ill, the groaning of those who are suffering with sickness in their bodies and in their souls? Do you hear that? My, my, my. Oh, my God, help us to hear. Help us to hear, oh, Lord. Do you hear? the cries of those who are not safe at home from violence or on the streets from brutality? Do you hear the speech of our undereducated children? Do you hear that? Do you hear the voices of those who demand equality in all the systems of life? Do you hear the sound of the shofar blowing in all of these places, calling you and me to come there and help? 
Do you hear the trumpet sounding? We can help. For though we walk in the flesh, as the scripture tells us, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, to the casting down of imaginations and every high thing that would exalt itself above the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled, when my obedience is fulfilled. There it is. There it is right there. Right there in the last sentence of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 6. There it is being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We cannot allow the cart to get before the horse. If we are going to advance to the places where we hear the trumpet, where we hear the shofar and be victorious, then we must be the people who are called by the name of God, who humble ourselves, who pray, who seek God's face, and who what? Turn from our wicked ways. Why? That God may hear us from heaven, that God may forgive our sins, and that God may heal our land. Do you hear that? Evil has come against our land. Evil has come against our city. Evil has come against our families. And God in Christ Jesus has given us the power to do something about it. You don't even have to leave your home if you can't do that. If you are on a bed of affliction, you don't even have to leave the bed to do that. There are others of us who will go out and put our hands to the plow without looking back, but then we don't want to get the cart before the horse because there's something in us that has to be ready for the fight in order for us to win. We don't want to be like the Israelites that went up to Ai and went to fight against them, but because there was sin in the camp, they killed 36 of them and sent the rest of them running. A little nation like Ai. Why? Because there was sin in the camp. To be victorious, we have to do as it says in Deuteronomy 28. You know, I was reading, you know, I'm reading through the Old Testament right now, and I'm reading how, you know, God says to us, if you do this, that, and the other, no sicknesses will come upon you, you will be victorious. And he gives a long list of blessings that we would receive. But down through time, down through history, we have not been obedient. We can't just lay it and say that was our foreparents. It is us. We have not been obedient. And so we see a lot of things happening in our lives as a result of generational bondage. Well, you with the sword of the spirit decide this day that you will be the one in your generation that will be obedient and take the sword of the spirit and cut the tie of that generational bondage from your life and the life of your children and those to come. Deuteronomy 28 says, Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. That was verse 1. Verse 7. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Hallelujah. You don't have to be afraid. You know, people say that, are you one of those that when you wake up in the morning and your 
feet hit the floor that the enemy is afraid because of what you have in Christ, not what you have in and of yourself, what you have in Christ, that your life is hid in Christ in God that you rise up in the morning with a prayer and an intercession on your lips with the word of God in your mouth. The enemy doesn't want to hear that. You, the people of God, are and must demonstrate that we are a holy nation within nations around the world. The people of God, a holy nation within all the nations around the world. Our prayer is that we as a holy nation, the people of God, would be diligent to obey God's voice in whatever he says. Then when we hear the shofar blowing, we know that our God will fight for us and we could go to that place and reap the victory that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. We can go when we hear the trumpet blowing and be confident that God will fight for us. God has already gone before us. We can do something about the situations of this world more than just moaning and crying and complaining about how things are, being afraid to walk out on the street. God has given us the power to do something about it. Hear that trumpet blowing. You may not be able to go to North Philly or Germantown or Northeast Philly or West Philly or even parts of South Philly, but you can intercede. You can stand in the gap. As it says here in Nehemiah, that wherever there was a gap, they would go there to fill that gap. The enemy is angry. And we see him running rampant through this earth. And we, the people of God, have the power in Christ to do something about it. But we must be that holy nation. We must be that holy people. Hallelujah. We must be those that carry the weapons and teach other people to carry the weapons. What are our weapons of our spiritual warfare? The full armor of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith in our hands. The helmet of salvation to protect our minds from the attack of the devil who wants to lie to us and tell us whatever it is that he wants us to know so that we can be destroyed. We have to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And holding it all together, the belt of truth, the full armor of God, and our praise, and our worship. They are weapons against the enemy. When they sent out the army of Israel, they sent out the singers first to give God praise and to worship God. They are weapons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In some places and times, the army didn't even need to fight. They killed each other. Let us be the people of God who are holy and not be afraid of them. Let us be the people who remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for our brethren. Fight for our mothers and fathers, our sisters and brothers, our children. Fight for those around us, in our neighborhoods, in communities, and on our jobs. Fight for them, for God has given us the weapons that we need that are mighty through him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord, O oh God, for this word, indelibly imprinted upon our spirits, that our souls and our bodies will follow and do whatever it is that you tell us to do, O oh God, that we may cooperate with you and stand with you and know that we are victorious because of you, that there is no weapon that is formed against us that shall prosper. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
it is now time for us to celebrate what Jesus Christ did for us at Calvary. It is Communion Sunday. Take a moment to go and get your bread and your, the fruit of the vine, your juice today, that you may join with us as we celebrate what Jesus Christ did for us at Calvary, the great victory that he won for you and for me. In that package called Salvation is so many things, peace and safety, healing, protection, provision. God has provided so much for us. Our God is a good God. And he loves us with an everlasting love. I want to read to you from Matthew chapter 26. I actually want to start, I'm, I'm just looking at where I want to start. I'd like to include some things that maybe we don't always include in our thinking of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I'm going to start in verse 17 of Matthew 26. I usually start around verse 26, but I want to start in 17. Now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying to him, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them and they prepared the Passover. Now when evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. Now they were eating, as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? You see, the Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So they said, Lord, is it I? He answered and said, he who dipped his hand with me in the dish will betray me. The son of man indeed goes just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? He said to him, you have said it. Verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins but i say to you i will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom thank you for the word the word of the lord may we be blessed by your word thank you god Right now, O oh Lord, we pray over these elements. These elements, O oh Lord God, that are bread and the fruit of the vine. We ask you, O oh Lord, to transform them from their natural use to a spiritual use. That we may indeed partake of your flesh and your blood by the Spirit. That your word, you who are the word who became flesh, that your word would indeed become flesh in our lives. And as we are broken, as you were broken, O oh God, 
that our brokenness would be a signpost on the road to you for others who are searching and seeking to find God, the only true and living God. And may the blood that you shed be the blood that has been transfused into each one of us, your believers. In Jesus Christ, we pray. We thank you that your precious blood, you signed a new covenant with us. With your broken body, you opened the way for us to come into the holiest place that there is before your holy and awesome presence. Not needing anyone to come in for us. We can all come in all by ourselves, individually, and obtain mercy and grace in our time of need. Thank you, Lord, for all that you supply by your precious sacrifice, your broken body, and your shed blood. Thank you for blessing these elements in Jesus' name. And we pray, O oh God, for ourselves. We just take a moment, O oh God, before we receive these holy elements to pray for ourselves for the forgiveness of sins that you have already provided for us all we need do is ask holy 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 lord god almighty Against you and you only have we sinned. Forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Uphold us, Holy Spirit, that we may walk in the newness of life. In Jesus' name I pray. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was broken for you and for me. Take and eat all of it. fruit of the vine which represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ that signed the new covenant for you and for me take and drink all of it Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name. 
Hallelujah. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. Jesus, 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 like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms, they shall all pass away, but there's something about that name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his grace always be upon you, the light of his countenance upon you. May he give you peace. May you, he direct you continually in the way that you should go. May you hear his voice whenever he calls. May the Holy Spirit help you to be obedient when you hear the sound of the trumpet blow, wherever in this city it may blow. When you're reading the newspaper, may you hear that trumpet blow. When you're listening to the news, may you hear that trumpet blow. When you're out on the street, may you hear that trumpet blow and lift up a prayer and intercession that you may go and help wherever help is needed by virtue of your prayers and your intercession and your worship of God. God bless you and keep you. And watch over and guard and keep you in health and in peace and under his protection until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.